This is WKYT This Morning. It's Friday, and we're glad you're here on WKYT as we start off this day leading to the weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. February 19th is the day. And it's going to be a delightful day. We're talking about highs in the 60s. What about that? And now at 630, a man is shot behind a Lexington strip club. He is now fighting for his life. We are going to be live with the latest information. We have some new details coming in. A man says he chased off a murder suspect with a chainsaw after witnessing a friend being stabbed. And how a clerk at a Lexington gas station fought back against a man who robbed the store this morning. We are looking at the 40s outside this morning. This is really a nice, this is actually where we finished off yesterday uh, toward the afternoon hour. So this is a good start to the day. 46 now in Richmond, 44 in Lexington. By the afternoon, 62, extremely nice. How long do we hold on to that though? Still winter, don't forget that, and I'll have that coming up. All right, a lot going on in the news this morning. A new on WKYT, a young man is fighting for his life after an early morning shooting at a Lexington strip club. The victim showed up at St. Joe East Hospital off Richmond Road around 2.45 in the morning. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at the strip club where police say the man was shot. Good morning, Rebecca. In the past 40 minutes, police have added an extra layer of crime tape in the parking lot here behind Camelot East. Now, they've also brought in their mobile crime lab to start collecting evidence. Officers here have placed cones to mark shell casings, and I've counted eight of those. Now, they are going back, focusing a lot of their attention in those areas where they say those shell casings have fallen, collecting those evidence. Now, we are uh, continuing to follow the investigation this morning, and they say that while it appears as if at least eight shots were fired, the man was only hit three times. Officers learned there was a shooting when a man in his early 20s showed up at St. Joseph East Hospital with several gunshot wounds. They realized he had been shot behind the Richmond Road Strip Club a short time later when someone called them around 2.45 to report a shooting there. The man who was shot twice in the chest and once in the leg has since been rushed to UK Hospital in critical condition. Investigators don't know who shot him or why he was shot because they say there were not any witnesses. They're now checking to see if surveillance cameras in the area caught the shooting. Now that the forensics unit is here, they're going over the scene. Officers are hoping that their investigation will help give them a better idea of who shot the man and why he was shot. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Now, this is the second shooting at Camelot East this month. Back on February 8th, police say two groups of people exchanged gunfire right outside the strip club. No one was hurt in that shooting, but at least one bullet did damage a nearby business. New this morning, police have made an arrest in a deadly Jackson County stabbing. This happened at a home on Bailey Road in the Anvil community. A witness says he chased off the attacker with a chainsaw. WKOT's Michelle Chamberlain's at our live desk with new information on this. Kentucky State Police have arrested Harry Henson of Manchester for allegedly murdering 36-year-old Bradley Muncie. Now, we're told Henson was found a short time after the murder in his car near the home where the murder took place. Police say four other people were present at the time of the murder. Douglas Allen tells us he was there. He says he was in the trailer when a man came in saying someone stole his medication. Allen says that man grabbed a knife and a fight ensued in the driveway where Muncie was stabbed in the throat. Police say Henson allegedly stabbed Muncie and threatened the four other people who were present. Allen said he ran Henson off after the stabbing. The only thing I know to do was to grab my chainsaw because I didn't got a gun or anything. And I fired my chainsaw up and run him off and run him up the road. Now, Muncie was pronounced dead at the scene. Police have charged Henson with murder and four counts of wanton endangerment. Police say Henson is currently in the hospital for treatment for an injury he received during that stabbing. At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, thank you, Michelle. New on WKYT this morning, a clerk at a Lexington gas station was able to turn the tables on a would-be robber. Police say a man stole money and cigarettes from the Circle K on Richmond Road around 2.30 this morning. The clerk chased after the man who picked up a pipe on his way out of the store. But the clerk was able to steal that pipe and beat the robber, who police say left with some only bruises. Turnabout on that one. Also new this morning, crews are investigating an overnight fire that gutted a southern Kentucky home. The fire was on Bowling Ridge Road just outside of Broadhead in Rockcastle County. Now, the house is about an hour away from WKYT News, so by the time our crew got there, heavy smoke was still pouring out of the house. Firefighters say it was vacant. They do, do think that the cause of the fire is suspicious in nature. They say the fire was fueled by the wind conditions, similar to the day of the fire 
that destroyed the bluegrass stockyards uh, in Lexington. So uh, that's going to be an issue today with those uh, winds kicking up. Uh, Mike is telling us that wind advisory 7A to 7P. Here in Lexington, crews remain at the scene right now of an early morning house fire. Five people were in the home on Kelsey Drive off Alexandria when the fire started around 345 this morning. Mike Byer is tracking this story live from the scene. That's right, guys. Kelsey Drive here on Lexington's west side remains filled with emergency vehicles and fire trucks after a house fire early this morning. I'm going to step out of the shot, give you guys a live look at what's going on. Firefighters are now wrapping up after this house fire. Meanwhile, we know what caused this fire. Investigators tell us there were four space heaters running inside of the home. We're told they overloaded the circuit in the attic, causing flames to come shooting out of the roof. The fire happened around 3.30 this morning. That's when firefighters responded to the house fire in the 1100 block of Kelsey Drive. Roughly a dozen crews responded to the fire. Now firefighters tell us five men were sleeping in the house when the fire started. We're told they woke up to the smell of smoke. Fortunately, all five were able to escape the home without injury. No firefighters were injured as well. Now the home received significant damage, but we're told it is repairable. In the meantime, the five men who escaped the home will be living with family. Now, firefighters tell us this home had no working smoke detectors. They say the five men were very lucky to escape with their lives. They say this should serve as an important warning to all of us to make sure that we have working smoke detectors inside of our home. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Always a good reminder. Thank you, Mike. Uh, a Nicholasville woman has been charged with after two dogs were found starving at her home. One dog was treated at a vet's office and is now at an animal shelter. But animal control says they are not sure if the other dog will be able to recover to be put up for adoption. The dog's owner, Vicki Madden, is charged with second degree animal cruelty. She told us off camera she tried her best to feed the dogs but didn't know where to turn for help. And a former Lee County Circuit Clerk has been charged with abusing public trust. 58-year-old Emma Adams is scheduled to be arraigned on the charge today. Investigators say between January of 2014 and September of last year, Adams took more than $100,000 that the administrative offices of the court had given to Lee County. The state Senate has approved a bill that would create two different marriage license forms in Kentucky. One form would be for straight couples, the other for same-sex couples. Both forms would not include the county clerk's name. This bill is in response to Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis's refusal to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples for religious reasons. That bill now goes over to the state house. The state transportation department says it has finally stopped a mudslide that closed a Rockcastle County Road. Both lanes of US 25 near the Laurel County line are now open. Mud started to just slide on down that hill Wednesday, and every time crews cleaned up the road, more would fall. Workers will continue to monitor that area. It was payback time for Coach John Calipari and the Kentucky Wildcats. Unlike their first meeting with Tennessee earlier this month, the Wildcats came out hitting on all cylinders last night. Jamal Murray scored 28 points. Derek Willis made seven three-pointers for a career-high 25. And number 14 Kentucky beat Tennessee 80-70. to now the Cats travel to College Station to take on Texas A&M. That game is tomorrow night, Saturday's game, set for 6.30, and it will be on ESPN. Well, a dream of a century, uh, it took a century in the making, came true for an eastern Kentucky woman. 100-year-old Louisa Amos from Pikeville has been a U.K. fan for most of her life, but she had never seen them play in Rupp Arena. But this week, a neighbor surprised her with tickets to last night's big U.K. game with Tennessee. Louisa seemed to enjoy her very first game at Rupp. Friends tell us the retired school teacher knows every UK player from the Fabulous Five on. So what an opportunity mm -hmm. it was and hope she had a great time. Yeah. Well, there's a new addition coming to the Louisville Zoo this spring. Gorilla Mia Moja is pregnant. She's expected to deliver a healthy baby in May. The Louisville Zoo says that like pregnant humans, pregnant gorillas experience a change in their taste. During her first trimester, Mia Mosha would drink only grape juice, refusing apple, cranberry, and orange. <laughs> Western lowland gorillas are considered critically endangered, and her pregnancy is part of a breeding survival plan. So it's good to know that Mia and I have something in common. <laughs> you can, you Change, relate to Mia, right? <laughs> changing tastes. I can definitely relate yeah, to that. What are some of these things? <laughs> sweets. Sweets and more I sweets. Understand.
Uh, coming up on 640 on WKYT this morning. <laughs> let's check traffic. Chocolate is a big one, too. Uh, here, let's see what's happening yeah. out on the roads. Let's do that right now. And uh, here's a check right now of our maps. We'll see uh, what is happening out there, if we can switch to those. A lot of green on there, as uh, we understand it this morning. There it is. And uh, we have no reports of any early issues right now. Closer look in indicates uh, much the same. Even as you get into Lexington, uh, traffic picking up in some areas. Uh, we do have a bit of an issue right now that we do want to let you know, and this is uh, uh, right now a road closure due to utility work going on Spruce Street westbound from 3rd Street to 2nd Street, uh, and that is going to be going on until 3 o'clock today. Actually, that will start at 9, so that's just an advisory, 9 to 3 today uh, at that location. Travel times, it's a good ride in for most of the region this morning. Uh, things are uh, looking uh, pretty good out there. And there they are. 12 minutes from Nicholasville, not a bad ride. From Paris, about uh, 19 minutes. And about a half hour in, you'll be uh, here from Richmond. Or, okay. or you can go to Richmond, either way. <laughs> and you can get the latest traffic and weather information anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. <laughs> More news from WKYT <laughs> this morning's on the way. Hope your day's off to a great start. We certainly do. And when we come back, we have a story that will make dentists everywhere cringe a little. A 20-year-old in the Gaza Strip performs an amazing feat uh, with his teeth. Uh, not for me, not for me. Look, we're looking outside. Beautiful weather. It feels great this morning. Afternoon you'll love. Saturday afternoon you'll love, but you know it doesn't last long. We're still in winter. I'll show you that forecast coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, it's a really good looking day outside. Feels good, looks good. Here's the look across 75, and then as you work your way through Winchester Road, I'm not seeing any issues whatsoever. Haven't heard of any issues there on traffic either. So as you're taking off this morning, you look just fine. No black ice. That's some good news. You don't have to worry about that this morning. Had a few spots yesterday morning just due to temperatures being right around 32. We are nowhere near 32 degrees outside. If you look on the Fender Radar Network, nothing going on, clear skies. We're sitting there in the 40s this morning. It's beautiful. And now look at that. As that sun's trying to peak above the horizon, I-75 Athens, Boonesboro, good looking shot out there. And also, as you make your way up, 75 all the way to Winchester Road, 64, 75 Southern Split area looks fine. On the roadways there, going from Paris Pike and also Russell Cave. Not hearing or seeing any issues up toward Bryan Station High School area. 44 degrees there in Lexington. We're at 46 in Somerset. This is an awesome feel. Look back toward the west. There across 65, we're talking Bowling Green at 52. Cave City area, you know where all the dinosaurs are? Yeah, you're sitting there across 50 degrees. This is beautiful weather this morning. Playground weather, absolutely. We go through the day, and you see by the afternoon, 1 p.m., about 57 degrees. Noontime 54. I mean, we'll be in the 50s anywhere from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you string it out toward 2 p.m., you're talking about 60 degrees outside at 2 p.m. You got to love that. Teachers, get the kids outside. You'll love it. Next week, you might not be able to. There's Friday as the temperatures will be in the 60s, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. That is our only thing to, I don't want to say worry about. I don't think worry is the word, but. It's the only thing I can come up with right now. And that's it. That's all we have to be concerned about throughout the day. It's beautiful weather. 60s? I don't know if anybody is going to complain about that. Actually, I'll find somebody on my Facebook page that will complain about that. Uh, Saturday will be another mild day. Beautiful conditions. Slight rain chance, mainly during the evening and nighttime hours. So, not really anything to affect us. We go in towards Sunday. Showers will be on the increase. That's our only bump in the road now throughout your weekend. Temperatures there in the 50s. Let's check out your seven day forecast. 62 today, 63 for tomorrow. These two days are phenomenal days. In towards Sunday, there are your showers. In toward next week, like I said, teachers, get your kids outside today because next week, 47 on Monday, that's not bad. But look at Tuesday and Wednesday. Those are days we're going to watch very closely. If kids are in school, it's still going to be extremely rainy. If they're out of school, yeah, the other end of the spectrum. I don't know if I want to talk about it right now. With uh, sixes in I the know. Forecast. Well, yeah. here you I'm go. not going to mention it. Well, not think that no. far ahead. No, no, you imagine how busy the car washes will be in the next couple busy. of days. I will be and there. Then, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. then here comes that again. <laughs> so maybe don't spend too much on the <laughs> wash, right?
Uh, all right, uh, 647 is the time this morning. Well, the Times of Israel newspaper is calling him Gaza's Jason Satham. Right, 20-year-old Mohammed Baraka is making a name for himself after pulling a 12-ton bus with his teeth. His stunt has made him a local hero there in the Gaza Strip. His videos have been shared on Facebook among Palestinians. In his free time, Baraka told the newspaper he also enjoys walking on nails and cracking bricks on his chest and back for pastime. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Uh, Whatever gets day, you right? through the day, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, Friday morning on WKYT. We're glad you're up and at it. Hope you don't have to do such things today. Yeah, to keep <laughs> yourself occupied, right. right? More news on the way. Donald Trump's holy war. Will his response to the Pope help or hurt his campaign? Plus, Apple's fight with the FBI could head to the Supreme Court. A closer look at the debate over national security. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. It does affect you. Our time this morning is 6.51, 9 before 7 on WKYT. Still to come, Adele gets emotional. The superstar talks about that infamous Grammys performance and why it left her in tears. That and more coming up. Of course, it's the eve of the primary in South Carolina and the caucuses in Nevada. It's coming up on CBS This Morning. Well, police are looking for the person who shot a man behind a Lexington strip club. The shooting happened about 2.30 this morning behind Camelot East on Richmond Road. Police say a young man was shot three times, twice in the chest. He is now at UK Hospital and is in critical condition. Police say no witnesses have come forward. Lexington firefighters say four space heaters are to blame for an early morning fire on Kelsey Drive off Alexandria just before four this morning. Five people were inside the home when the fire started and managed to escape. Firefighters say there are no working smoke detectors in the home. Also new this morning, crews are investigating an overnight fire that gutted a southern Kentucky home. The fire was on Bowling Ridge Road just outside Broadhead in Rockcastle County. The house is about an hour away from WKYT. By the time our crews got there, heavy smoke was seen pouring out of that home. Firefighters say it was vacant, and they do think the cause of the fire is suspicious. New this morning, police made an arrest in a deadly Jackson County stabbing. The state police have charged Harry Henson of Manchester with murder. The scene was at a home on Bailey Road in the Anvil community. The homeowner there says Henson showed up and started fighting with B.J. Muncie after accusing him of stealing his medication. Along with murder, police say Henson also faces four counts of wanton endangerment. President Obama will pay his respects to Antonin Scalia today as his body lies in repose at the Supreme Court. The 79-year-old Supreme Court Justice died of natural causes over the weekend during a hunting trip in Texas. Scalia's death has sparked a fierce debate in Washington and out on the campaign trail over who should replace him. His funeral is set for tomorrow. Presidential candidates make their final pitches to voters ahead of South Carolina's Republican primary and Nevada's Democratic caucus. Hillary Clinton holds an eight-point lead over Bernie Sanders nationally in the new poll out this morning, but the two are considered neck and neck in Nevada. Donald Trump continues to hold a commanding lead over the GOP field with John Kasich and Marco Rubio in a virtual tie for second and third. Donald Trump took a step back last night, hours after blasting Pope Francis for suggesting his plan to build a wall at the border is not Christian. At a town hall in South Carolina, the billionaire candidate called the Holy Father a wonderful guy, saying the press exaggerated his comments. Pope Francis also made headlines for suggesting contraceptives could be used to slow the spread of Zika virus. Kanye West says he's $53 million in debt, so the Philadelphia Police Department is making, making him an offer maybe he can refuse, I don't know, a job. The department tweeted out this job offer to West. They said it has a starting salary of $48,000, and West could be debt free by the year thir excuse me, 3122. A little hiccup action. West has not responded, but he did ask Mark Zuckerberg to invest a billion dollars in him for being the greatest artist of all time. Okay, well, we'll see if, if, that, uh, if he gets an interview or applies to the job. Time this morning is 6.54. It is a busy day in our newsroom. We're keeping you updated on air and online at WKYT.com. Lexington police looking into that shooting outside a strip club off Richmond Road. The victim now critical at UK Hospital. A lot of questions there. There was gunfire at that location just a couple of weeks ago, and it struck a nearby business. So the police have uh, set up a major crime task force response there. Kentucky 
public university president speaking out about Governor Bevin's proposed budget cuts. The president of KCTCS says it will lead to tuition hikes. And also trending this morning is Kentucky's sweet revenge over Tennessee last night. It was a big win for the Cats as they romped over the Vols 80 to 70. And it was a turnaround for the Cats as well, who lost in Knoxville uh, just a couple of weeks ago. You remember that. And on Kentucky.com, the Kentucky women made it look easy with an 83 to 60 win over Mississippi State last night. It's the third win in a row for the team, and they seem to be gelling at just the right time. And the Lexington Council has approved a resolution supporting a $250 million overhaul of the Lexington Convention Center. The city would put up $10 million to go along with the $60 million that the governor has set aside in his proposed budget. CBS This Morning will follow us at 7 with your eye opener. They'll have the latest from the campaign trail on the eve of the South Carolina primary and the Nevada caucus. There they are getting ready to go at the CBS Broadcast Center. And of course, we'll have local updates uh, throughout CBS This Morning as well. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. Man, do we have a good looking morning in store. Temperatures in the 40s outside. When I walked outside this morning, it was actually a little bit surprising of, of just not feeling the 40s for quite some time in the morning hours. We haven't felt it in a long, long time during the mornings, and you are going to see that this morning. 46 now in London is a very popular number. 48, close to 50 degrees down toward the southwest in the Cumberland region. And we're there in the mid 40s here in Lexington. Now we go through the day. A lot of sunshine to be had. Sunglasses will be needed by the afternoon as Rebecca talked about early this morning. The sunroof can, yeah, you can throw that sucker back, put the windows down. It will feel amazing later on this afternoon. This is the 60s in the forecast and we haven't felt that in over two weeks so we will take that off towards your weekend 60s again on Saturday only a very slight chance of rain most stay dry and then Sunday here comes some showers mm. but it's rain showers not mm. snow showers. that's good yeah. how about that for a couple of days here huh? all right nice. nobody's more up to date than you thank you for being with WKYT goodbye